talked about an uh, introduction to poi, but from a mechanical perspective, uh, we focused mostly on how the poi were constructed, how they were made, um, the different parts of the poi, and how they affected the poi spinning, and then a little bit into some physics about how what the poi is doing as it's moving in a circle, um, with the goal in mind that understanding the poi's motion and how it's moving when it's going around your body uh, affects how it's spinning so that you can just get a feel for how the toy is moving, but understand why it's moving like it is and see if that helps um, help you get a foundation for spinning a new toy. So the first part of our class was talking about the construction of the poi. The poi has three main parts, the handle, the tether, and the head, and the relationship between the two in terms of weight and types of material. Um, varies a lot. We spent uh, a good while talking about that, but there are a lot of different types of poi, from sock poi to contact poi to fire poi, and the main uh, differences between them are the well, the the elasticity of the cord, like sock poi stretch, so the faster the poi spins, the, the longer it gets, versus chains, which are heavier. So the heavier the cord is, the heavier you want your head to be, so that the point on the end of your poi when it's swinging around is easier to control. Um, is the more a poi is, the weight is equally distributed along the entire poi. So if you have a heavy chain and a light head and a light handle, it's going to be just like swinging a chain around. And you're going to have very small control, or very, very low level of control over it when you're swinging it in circles. So we talked about all those factors and and a little bit on grips, gripping it both. Um, We'll add some double loop examples, so a double loop grip, a single loop grip, and variations on that. Um, the key grip on other, unlike any poi that has a knotted or ball handle, um, the key grip with the ball anchored in underneath your pinky, and other ways of, of holding, of how you can hold the poi. And kind of what the disadvantages and advantages were, advantages were of those. Some are better for your arms, some are just more comfortable. Uh, Open-ended poi you can toss and catch, some poi you can't let go of, so if you're spinning with them on fire then it's more dangerous, etc. So then we started up and we looked at some pendulums, uh, just getting started, and when the poi is penduluming, we examined the forces that are kind of working on the poi. If we don't do anything to the poi, then the poi itself will not go above this horizontal line. In fact, we have to add in a little bit of effort to get the poi moving. If we just don't do anything, the poi will eventually rock itself and to still straight down. And that's because of gravity and like some other forces of friction. But basically, without any extra energy in it, we can't get the poi to go above where it currently is. And so we talked about how, why the poi is even moving in this circle, and that's based from the tension in the cord is accelerating it towards the center. And so anything in circular motion kind of follows this diagram where you have some acceleration towards the center of the circle. As it's spinning around, the poi is constantly being pulled towards my hand. And so that way it's always changing direction just ever so slightly, but the poi head itself doesn't change direction because we're not actually pulling the poi head. Um, we're not influencing the poi's speed because the poi is always moving perpendicular to the way we're pulling it. Just like pushing a block down on a table doesn't make it go left or right. It's the same idea. So the poi head remains to moves around the circle at the same speed, but we're always pulling it in a different direction, so it's constantly changing and moving in that circle that we like. And of course, at the bottom of the circle, our tension, uh, because we always have to accelerate at the same rate towards the center of the circle, at the bottom of the circle, we have gravity pulling down on us, and then we have to fight gravity going down with extra tension pulling up. So the tension has to outweigh gravity to pull the poi around in the circle. And when it's at the top of the loop, we'll see that we're working with gravity, so the tension is less, is because the acceleration, if we sum up all the forces of the tension and gravity, they have to equal the force of the tension minus gravity coming up from the bottom. So we feel much more of a tug at the bottom and a float at the top. And the key is to get the poi to make it all the way around without it floating and then falling down. Because if there's no tension in the cord, because our poi doesn't have enough energy, then we lose our circle shape and the cord collapses. And since we can't push the cord up at this angle, because we need gravity pulling against it to create that tension, 
we need to do that as the point is swinging around a little bit more. And so we use that to go into some static spins and then with larger, larger circles to get a feel for what's going on. And then if we, we examine some different properties of these circles and how the point move in them, and there's a fundamental relationship between the mass of the poi, how much force you need to move it in a circle, the speed the poi is going, both um, tangential to the circle, which is the speed that the poi is kind of moving around the circle, as well as the angular velocity of the circle, which is how long it takes the poi to move in one circle. And that's represented by this of these equations. The acceleration um, of the poi going up can be modeled as a relationship between its velocity, which is related to the circumference of our circle, um, and how long it takes to go around. That's, so that's A equals 4 pi r, pi squared r over t, where r is the radius, and t is the period, which is how long it takes the point to go around the circle. And then the force that we need to do to exert on the point to, to accelerate it is just that acceleration times the mass of the point. So we can see from this if our poi is lighter, but we're swinging in the same circle, then we need less force to swing it around. But if our poi, if we're swinging in a larger circle, then we need more force because the force is directly proportional to the radius. And it's inversely proportional to the period. So if we're spinning the poi in a faster circle, then the period increases, and so we need less force. Uh, or we can spin it faster, or if, we, if we're spinning it with the same force, and the poi is moving at the same speed, but has a shorter radius, then it's going to have a smaller period as well. So if I increase the radius here by a factor of two, then the poi is not only making one circle in the same amount of time that it takes to make two. And so we're using those relationships between all of these different variables when we're spinning is, um, is what we explored to try and find, to try and get a feel for how the poi is moving and where we can go with it.